Hello, how's it going? Today, we're talking about the Winterscorn War. The Titan Forge that were exiled from Oldowar after Loken's mental breakdown formed their own clans, and it didn't take long for battles for dominance to start happening. So let's go! The Earthen tunnelled into the deep places of the world. There, they came across a race of brutish and misshapen creatures known as Trogs. Now Trogs are basically a result of the Keeper's first try at using the Forge of Wills to create new Titan Forged. And as we've all experienced at some point in our lives, your first attempt at something is rarely the best. And let's just say, they're a bit special. Hello! Not in like a mean-spirited way, just, you know, special. Bye! The Keepers have been troubled by the Trogs, but they couldn't bear to destroy them, so Ionea built a subterranean vault known as Older Man. Sounds like Ionea's body clock was starting to tick away a bit. She just wants to find herself an older man to settle down with and give birth to a couple of pebbles. Older Man would act as a stasis chamber for the Trogs. Some did escape, though. Bye. Many of the Vrykuls stayed above ground, and for a little while, a tenuous peace existed. But it didn't last. In time, malign forces moved to assert dominion over the lands. Among these forces were Vulcan and Ignis. They saw the Storm Peaks as a land ripe for conquest. But they'd need an army, because this is Warcraft, and everyone needs an army. You're either building an army, or imprisoning something. They turned to the Winterscorn clan of Rykul. This clan had developed a culture of violence and aggression, mainly because they believed they could one day ascend to the Halls of Valor. Volkan and Ignis took control of the clan by force, and stoked the fires of their battle lust. They provided enchanted armor to the Winterscorn, and forged powerful weapons designed to shatter stone and iron skin. But, just as they embarked on this great conquest, the Winterscorn soldiers' skin became brittle and weak. They had begun to show the first symptoms of the Curse of Flesh. Volkan and Ignis had no intention of abandoning their campaign, but they knew they couldn't rely on the Winterscorn alone, what with them having stupid skin. To strengthen their army, they created molten golems and iron constructs of their own design. This massive army first marched on the Earthen in their underground lairs. The Earthen were completely unprepared for this attack, and the Winterscorn army massacred entire caverns of the last living creature. Tyr and his companions were bloody furious to learn what had happened. They immediately head out to assist the Earthen. In time, they drove the Winterscorn forces back. Volcan and Ignis would not concede defeat. They went back to their blistering forges and created a new army, again. But this one would definitely be stronger. They crafted enchanted snares to enslave entire flights of proto-dragons, outfitted with fiery weapons that they probably can't use because I can't imagine they've got thumbs. Knowing they could no longer win this fight alone, Tia called on the five dragon aspects. These five power rangers were quick to aid. It was bad enough that the Winter Scorn were killing Titan Forged, but they bloody enslaved proto-dragons and that's just not on. Much like their fight with Galakrond, the dragon aspects worked in unison against their enemy. Alex Straza held the Winter Scorn at bay with walls of enchanted fire. Malagos drained the magical essence that fueled the constructs and golems, rendering them useless. He also shattered the enchanted snares that bound the proto dragons and set them free. Neltharion raised mountains from the ground to contain the Vrykul and their giant masters. Isera and Nosdormu combined their powers to envelop the Winter Scorn in a mist which caused them to fall asleep. Another one of those probably should have led with that moments, but at least everyone contributed. In the millennia to come, the Curse of Flesh would continue warping the sleeping Winter Scorn Vrykul. When they eventually awoke, almost every one of them would discover that they had degenerated into mortal creatures of flesh and blood. And we're leaving it there! So it's nice to see the good guys win something for a change. A lot of the recent events have been kind of, well, mean. It was starting to feel a bit hopeless on Azeroth, and it was getting a bit sad. But not as sad as the ending to Friday's video. We're going to see a heist, but we're also going to see a noble sacrifice. So if you want to see that, subscribe and come back on Friday. If you enjoyed the video, you can hit that like button. You can talk to me in the comments. We're getting very close to the end of Chapter 2 of Chronicle. Pretty soon we're going to be moving on to much more recent history of Azeroth, with things like Trolls, Night Elves, The Sundering, the introduction of some massive lore characters that frequently pop up in World of Warcraft. But what have you thought about the story so far. But all that's left to say is, thanks very much for watching, and see ya!